Hi, and welcome to episode 76 of the Codependent Knitters and Friends. So today, I it's a special episode. We're recording at my home with um, my company. So my sister Marianne is here. She's here from Southern Manitoba. And my friend Shirley from my hometown in Northern Manitoba is here. Hi, Don. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So we're going to have some fun and talk about, um, they've been here for four days now. Yeah, today's day four and they're leaving tomorrow and we've had some adventures and we went to uh, Woolstock. What we did a lot. We went to the Apaca farm, we went to Woolstock, we went to Little Red Mitten. Um, we did some knitting under the bridge and we're going to do some more of that. So uh, we've had a really been a busy few days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll talk about those adventures um, a little later because then we did collect some souvenirs and um, we we'll actually just start off with showing some knitting because we are all knitters and we have knitting here. Um, Marianne, do you want to talk about FO first? Okay, sure. Um, what you're wearing. Okay, so I am wearing the uh, Weekend Slipover V-neck by Petite Knit. The yarn is a discontinued yarn, I believe. I got it from my friend Daria who has Cloud9 Fiberworks. Um, it's an Italian yarn, can't remember the name of it because uh, I didn't wasn't prepared for that. Oh. But anyways, it's got little balls, little bobbles all over it. So you oh, just yeah. knit them in and yeah, I just did it kind of more, a little bit longer. Um, and then just did the I-cord around the neck and around the armholes and on the bottom and just very plain. So yeah, mm -hmm. just a, a totally different version of the of the um, V-neck. Slip over, we can yeah. slip over. Looks good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, can gorgeous. you come a little bit closer? Yeah. The back of your chair there. Okay. Nice. And then my finish that I got finished mm -hmm. for the for the want. event. This is the uh, Gustav, and it is by I gotta read the name because it is a um a, a different name here. It is by Ario Tixier. If I said that right. Orly. Orly? Orly. Okay. Orly. Tixier, and it is with Cloud9 Fiberworks, again my friend Daria. It is with her Pyrocumulus Sock Yarn, and it's got, a, you can't probably see it, but it's got, oh, oh there yes, you go. you can. It's got a great litter, so the natural, the undyed, and then the blue is intergalactic, and I, as you can see there, I've done, um, the natural mm -hmm. has Stellina as well. The natural it is just doesn't show as much. Yeah. So getting going, of course, I'm working with five balls because you are knitting back and forth as you create the neckline and the raglan. So a little bit of yarn management happened there, but it was okay. And, uh, and then I put stripes at the bottom. And then on the sleeve, I just added a white stripe as contrast. And uh, the button band, the inside of the placket is the, the blue. They're really hard to get off. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> and then the the buttons I just got through Amazon. They are a sapphire and diamond button. And like, why not? You know, if you're gonna sparkle, just go all the way. Yep. Yeah. They're beautiful. Perfect. They are. Yeah. They're perfect. I thought it was really interesting how you knit with. You didn't color change. You just like you or I guess you color change, but you knit the natural then the blue then yeah the, so you had those balls that you those yes knit. yeah yeah so then you're knitting one direction then purling all the way back because it's not in the round yeah, yeah. and yeah. you needed it in two different places yes yeah so, so five so balls nice. right so white for here the blue the white for the back the blue and then the white for this front wow. one mm -hmm. yeah so nice yeah 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 really That's well done beautiful. yeah i had a vision of that last year when i saw the blue yarn from daria and and then the vision was there and the vision, the vision worked. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so that's my most recent finish. Your most recent there. finish? Yes. You do have more? Nope, not for finish. Not for finish. Nope, okay. not here. That's your new finish. Yes. Okay. Um, hmm? This is Dawn's. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I what we're wearing. This. <laughs> Shirley's wearing uh, Close to You by Justina Lorkowska. And it, I made that in Malabrigo, um, the fingering weight, which was probably Malabrigo sock. The color is Anniversario, and I, I'm sure they're still making it. Um, and it's a favorite. It's it's just got all multicolored. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it surely needed a little scarf or a shawl to go with her ensemble, and it worked beautifully. <laughs> yeah. And the shawl pin, I don't remember where I got that from, but it's just a metal. Um, yeah. Yeah. Metal, a metal pin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. I have a few. Okay. Uh, so I finished a couple of things for Bridge and Fair, which was recently here in Sarnia. So these 
um, my socks. You saw these in the last episode and they are the um, Over Easy socks by Holly Yo. So this was um, a Leo and Roxy one of a kind. The stripes on the bottom are Timber Yarns Ellie and it's a really fun ankle sock to knit and I submitted them in the adult socks category and I got a third place ribbon Very so that was fun. Yeah and then I did a couple of new projects so I made this beanie and I love it. This is the Alder beanie and let me just look at my notes. David Van de Camp is the designer so you can see the color work. It has Latvian braids. Actually, it has two Latvian braids and then one up at the top. And color's pretty accurate for how, yeah, our color light is good. The color's pretty accurate. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and I did it in like, it was a rush job. I did it in like three days, four days. <laughs> um, and the yarns were a Full Moon Fibers sock set. So there's two colors, the lighter speckled. Um, I believe is unbelief. I believe, I believe <laughs> is unbelievable. And the darker plum color is Moon Vista. So it was a lucky 50-50 uh, solar sock set. And I think I picked it up at one of their pop-up shops at Little Red Mitten. So I have some left. Um, I should weigh it and see. I don't know. I could probably make, I could probably make some ankle socks with what's left. Um, Cause I don't, this didn't take much because it is a beanie. So I'm not going to put it on, uh, but I can try and um, put it on my, put a picture in on my uh, on my head mannequin and then I had a couple more I did two crochet dishcloths also for the Brigden Fair and I did the same pattern but I reversed the colors so the pattern is called hand painted and the designer is Anna Moray Soares it's available on Ravelry I'll show the picture first so that's the one, and then I did it in the reverse colors. Those are so nice. Yeah. This is mosaic crochet, and it's actually really easy compared to how it looks. Um, show the back. Yeah. Each round is done with one color. So you go around with one color, and then the next color, how you make the pattern is with double crochets over top to the same color row below. So basically where there's a right, a white vertical bar on that white row, it's just doing double crochet down over top of the blue in between. So, um, it really is, is, it really is not as difficult as you might think to do that. Um, so the pattern is on Ravelry, but I also thought to check my 100 crochet tiles book. And it's in there, so I didn't have to buy the pattern again. Um, and it's written as well as charted. All of the patterns in here are written and charted. And um, yeah, there's there's a lot of beautiful designs in here, a hundred of them. So it's great value. This book, I thought, I bought it um, before Christmas. It is still available. So I saw it at Michael's in the you know magazine stand. And I actually then saw it later at Walmart. They had a couple copies. So 100 crochet tiles. Um, I think when I looked on Amazon, I don't think I could find it or else it was just a lot more money. But it was $16.99 on the newsstand in Canada. So that's really good value. Yeah, so that's those. And they got a first from their category. So it was fun. Yeah. I loved making those. And a couple more things. I also, I did knitted dishcloths. Um, these were, somehow they got mistagged. I'm not sure what happened. Um, doesn't matter. They were fun to knit. And this is the Sock Monkey Sweater dishcloth. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's adorable. <gasps> and this is the Sock Monkey Duke. <laughs> so for a pom-pom, instead of doing a pom-pom, I did I-cord and then coiled it and sewed it together and then sewed it with the yarn onto the hat. And I just sewed it on the top stitches so you don't see any thread in the back. And the cotton, the gray is a Knit Picks dishy. I think it was silver. And the white and red are Suds dishcloth. 
um, you know, you can make a little pom pom out of the scrubby. I know. I stuff, thought about you? Yeah. just I as a little. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was going to, and I think I have white scrubby, but I don't know where it is, and I yeah. thought I didn't have time. Yeah, yeah. Because I was again okay. doing these like the week before. <laughs> but so, they're almost too nice to use. I know. <laughs> I know they're yeah. cute. I don't know what I'll do with them yet. But those are the sock <laughs> monkey just claws, and the pattern is Knitwits Heaven. Um, so they're on Ravelry, but I think, I can't remember if you can buy them on Ravelry, but I went to their website and bought them and they just, um, you download the PDF. So this would be Sweet. a really cute baby washcloth gift. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, for little, for little yeah, kids. For, yeah. Just, just yeah. in the tub. And Maybe it'll encourage them to bathe in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> to play in the bathtub. Yeah. Have fun in the bathtub. So yeah, it was, it, it was. Yeah, it's you knit start at the bottom, knit up. There's I love that it had cables. Yeah. And then you just um, pick up and do the sleeves and the little neck. So and I blocked it so it does look nice and flat and nice. So super fun. Very nice. What's Very that? Sweet. Those are all my Oh, one more. One more. That's okay. There was a category for an unfinished like needlework project. So it couldn't be framed or mounted. And uh, the only thing I had that was finished was um, this little guy. Oh, and I don't. Can hold him close? Yeah, um, I can also take a picture, but he's really oh, cute. Sweet. So it's just a little. Uh, I can't remember even the name of the bird. But the pattern was from a magazine, a Christmas ornaments magazine, and um, from a few years ago. And I'll try and find that information and put it in the notes down below. I know it's just really cute. I just liked it so it was just a little simple thing and I had I had this surge the edges so all I did was fold them over and just did some little tiny dot stitches and stitched them down so because um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it but it um, just for presentation but it had it had to be not covered on the back so that got a first in that category which is fun. so pretty mm -hmm. you can make it a little pillow it could or, be um, or a little hanging put it in the frame yeah for Christmas. I might do that. Just put it, mm -hmm. put it in a little frame and I can put it like on the mantle or wherever. So, um, Did I mention the cotton for the mosaics? Uh, no, you didn't. I didn't. Okay, I'll, I'll, Is it I can move it around. No, I've got it here. Okay. Yeah. So for the crochet dish claws, the mosaic, I used Line Brand 24-7 cotton and the color white. And then I don't have the band for the blue color, but it was a really... Um, bold cobalt blue. Yeah. I just got that at Michael's. Uh, Mary Maxim also sells it because we saw it there. Um, so yeah, there's quite a bit left after doing the two dishcloths. <laughs> Do more. That's all I have for finishes. Yeah, me too. Okay. Whips. Shirley, it's your turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So maybe you remember this yarn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is from a ways back. Yes, and it's called Codependent Knitters, and it was dyed by our friend Heather from mm -hmm. Timber Yarns. And um, so Dawn helped me put the heel in when we went to make on, Kappa, the, lake. Make on the lake, and um, I got to the foot part, and I unfortunately had to rip out the foot a couple of times because I picked them up uneven. Oh, okay. So then the toe was always ended up crooked. So now I think I'm on the right track, but didn't do that. And then this one, I knit this sock all the, I drove to Winnipeg and was able to knit the whole tube just driving to Winnipeg. And um, now I need to cut in the heel and I forget how to do that. So we will do that for you today before you go home. Oh, we'll get you, you set up. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that later today and we'll get, put it in the same spot and get you, get it on the needles for you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. The toe being, um, so when you're knitting, especially when you, it's noticeable when you knit something long in a circle, you're not knitting, your rows aren't straight. Mm -hmm. It makes a coil. It's like a slinky, right? So oh. that's why it kind of can look like if you look here, if you were to follow this row up, like, right, it ends up over here because you're kind of, you're, you're knitting in a twist really. So okay. if, if that, once you put it on your foot, it's likely not going to make a difference, difference. If that bothers you, you can just transfer your stitches and start in a little bit and not worry that it's not the exact row. So because okay. it's plain stocking stitch, and especially if you're using like a nine inch needle, 
you don't notice your front and back. If you were doing a sock with a pattern, you'd have an obvious top of the foot, bottom of the foot, then you wouldn't want to do that. Okay. But I'm playing stocking stitch. So when I do the tubes on the machine, if I'm cutting in the toe or whatever, I just lay the tube flat and like I don't I don't care that it's exactly lined up at the first stitch or the first stitch of the heel. I just okay, good enough. Oh, okay. Yeah. So not an issue with a plain stocking stitch sock. But that's why that happens. Just but you may know that, but for people watching that may not know that. Or if it bothers them that it looks twisted, usually it's not. Once you put it on your foot, you can't tell. So and I really like knitting with this nine inch. You do, eh? Doing the sock gear. I just, I haven't really done any fancy designs on a sock. It's just been two. So mm -hmm. yeah, I really like it. it just... It's great for just straight vanilla knitting because um, you don't have that split, right? That you don't have to move your magic loop. You don't have to worry about losing DPNs. Yeah, <clears throat> I like it. And then if you, you know what you can do? So you have needle stoppers that you can yes. put on because you do like that's just a little wee bit it's really close to the edge but you can also cut a little a little piece of this you know the, the barber tubing. cord mm -hmm. oh, the okay. tubing just cut a little piece and stick each end into the holes oh, good on your tips and then it's not a big piece of cord you can just cut off like a couple inches and then that can hold them too okay yeah that's a good idea yeah and i took the instructions that you made you gave me over how to do the heel and i typed i edited and made it Looks like oh, an actual pattern. For, you. for the rounded toe. <laughs> okay, so the instructions for the rounded toe are in our Ravelry group. Um, you don't have to look down through the discussion threads because I put that up probably over probably a year and a half, two years ago. And I did it for, um, I kind of explained like it assumes a 64 stitch, but how to sort of adjust if you have more or less stitches. And then also I did it for toe up. So if you're starting, how to make it more rounded because oh. I like the rounded toe now that I do it <laughs> yeah it's my I preferred so. yeah. okay okay that, that is your whip and that project's been going on for quite some time and the other project that has done. been going for quite some time is this um, this yarn is cloudboard and I don't know if it's still available I bought it from Craftsy and I bought the kit from Craftsy it's uh, a Zadie sweater and the grocery girls did that um, with Craftsy. Mm -hmm. uh, they the were TV doing shows. Yeah. yeah. So I started that and I needed some help. I did the arms and the body and needed help just starting the decreases. And Marianne was kind enough to go through it for me and set it back up. And now I've got, now I'm just decreasing for the shoulders and such. So it has, um, um, you can see there's one cable in there. Let's move this out of the way. Yeah. Go closer with it. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe it's going to have the cable the going up the arm, like where the decreases are in the raglan. Oh, and in the pattern, it does mm. do the, um, this is stockingette, but it does do garter. You could do one cable in garter and one in stockingette. But I just chose to do it all in, in garter. But I'm getting excited because it, it looks like a sweater now. It does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. It's so it, really You nice don't know yarn. if the yarns, yeah, because this is from a few years ago. But you've already but, knit one of these. Um. Uh, no, I knit, uh, I have the yarn left. I ordered two kits. Two kits. Okay, so yeah. this is the first one. Yeah, okay. and I, I'm doing, and That's actually really this nice. is the color that I bought for my mom. So I'm doing hers first. And okay. then now I'll have sweater quantity to do another sweater. And um, it's worsted weight. So I think like, um, I was thinking maybe a flax, but this time with the garter going down the arms. Because mm -hmm. I did a garter, or I did a, a flax with just straight stocking net. But I, I think I might, or somebody did it with cables going down the flax. Yeah, they why changed. not? Yeah, and that was nice too. Mm -hmm. So I do have uh, sweater quantity left of that. And this is um, the cloud born. It's a hundred percent wool, yes. right? Yes, it's yes. nice. Mm -hmm. it it whatever is it is, nice. I don't know. Like if it was Highland wool or whatever, I don't know what what it, it was labeled. But yeah, it's very, it's, it's very nice. It's actually, a, yeah, that, it's wearable. Like next to skin wear. And Dawn happened to lend me her make on the link. <laughs> <laughs> she needed a project bag. And your project bag. So it matches. Yeah. Match. <laughs> matchy, matchy. I love it. I have one of those because we went snake on the lake mm -hmm. together. That was our swag bag. And there you are. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I have for whips. For whips? Yeah. You go. Okay. So I am doing, let me pull this one out straight. This is the Jazz Gal. 
And it is by, let me just have a look here. It is by Mary Anarella. And I'll just do it close so okay. you can see. Oh, there, that shows oh, nice. So it's kind of stretch that out a little bit. Really nice round yoke motif. So of course I've split for the sleeves working on the body. And this yarn, uh, we, we at Norwood Naughty Knitters, it's a group that I go to on Sundays, we call it Maria's yarn because we have a lady who comes a few times a year. Her mother had um, a bunch of yarn and I'm not sure if she machine knit or what, but she has everything on cones. So then she winds these off. They're 50 skein balls, 100% 50 gram, 50 grams, sorry. 50 grams, um, little balls, three, some are three, three strands, some are four strands, some are two strands. Anyway, she sells them for a dollar a ball. And um, when she comes, we're like vultures. We just <laughs> go to the table and like, oh, you know, hone in on what you like. So don't know what the brand of this is, but it is 100% wool. And then I've paired it with knitting for all of their, um, their mohair, mohair silk. So holding those two together comes up with a really nice blue. And we were joking when Marianne was talking about the price of her cake, <laughs> her cakes of wool. I said, that's like a, a $6 sweater. <laughs> like, that's really good. And then you add them all here. <laughs> so it's a half free sweater. <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice. That's a really yeah. nice navy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. And I've had the yarn since spring, but you know, it's summer and you don't, don't want to really knit with mohair if you're sitting outside because it's just too sticky. So yeah, so I'm on that. All right. Do you want me to go to this one? Go ahead. Okay. So then the other one that I started um, just before we came out, I wanted to cast it on. This one is called, uh, oh, there it is. Lala, L-A-U-L-A -L -A by Sari Nordland. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And this yarn is 100% yak, and I got it at the Manitoba Fiber Festival. It um, there's a store in Winnipeg downtown called Zolzea, and this is from Mongolia. The store they have this natural yak. They also sell cashmere in balls, and then they have a lot of made, like I guess commercially made items from from the fibers from Mongolia, like, you know, socks, turtlenecks, that sort of thing. That's really good. So yeah, it's really soft and it's very nice. I love when ribbing goes right transitions into the, right into the design. Yeah. 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 I love those cables. Yeah. So this is a, it's a really, it, the pattern looks really intricate, but like each row is, is really simple. The, the repeats are easy, mem memorize, memorizable. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so you can do do the first couple of repeats and then you're off to the races as you go around. So that is my other sweater that I'm working on nice. here. Yeah. Cheers. When I see that, I get really intimidated, but I notice that you put stitch markers at your... Yeah. yeah. Every repeat. So yeah, then... I always put stitch markers at every repeat. And then it's just easy to keep track of the other. Yeah. You can see how... If you're off by a down. stitch, you know it's in that section. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's gorgeous. I like your stitch stoppers. Oh, of course, they have to match. I have to show the other ones. Where'd you get yeah. those ones? These ones I got. There was just a little fiber festival up in Selkirk, mm -hmm. in um, in uh, Manitoba, and these ones. Where did they go? I was going to mention. Oh. These ones. <laughs> of course, these ones are just you know totally me. Roller skates. My little roller skates. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to do a lot of. Competitive roller skating. <laughs> After the competitive figure skating. <laughs> you were the Canadian wow. roller skating, skating champion. I was. In what year? Oh, 19, uh, 1980, 81, 1982, no, oh, wow. 19, 1980, 1981. Yeah, there was a couple of years. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Long <laughs> time ago. <laughs> okay. Um, I have. A cast on. Um, I just cast on Thursday, I think, or I did my swatch Thursday. So the Knitting Loft had a sale and I knew from feeling Lisa's projects mm -hmm. and yarn, and actually I have ordered some for the Riptide Mittens, but I knew that I liked the D. Gilpin La Land. 
It's 100% lamb's wool. And I think it's like a DK, light DK gauge, DK gauge. So I ordered a sweater quantity in the color Coneflower. And that's pretty much exactly how it looks. It's a purpley blue, periwinkly color. And then Isabel Kramer put out her Bergliebe. And that, that's how it was said in the tutorial video. So Bergliebe, um, long sleeve sweater. And I thought, this is perfect. And I did a gauge swatch and I was bang on. And then I washed it too, just to see it did change by one stitch. So it is, well, you can't tell on the screen how soft it is, but yeah, that's, my that's my gauge swatch. It's, it's beautiful. It, it shows the stitches beautifully. Mm -hmm. It is beyond next to skin soft. It does not feel like a hundred percent wool, but it's a hundred percent lamb's wool. So obviously those lambs are pretty soft and cuddly. <laughs> it's so nice. I just, I'm, Mm, yeah looking forward Extreme. to wearing it yeah so if you aren't sure about 100% wool and you've been watching you know me I do not like anything rustic or scratchy like I'm a uh I'm a delicate flower and I just like <laughs> <laughs> I I'm I'm a princess no I like I like softer yarn I don't like I don't like to make a sweater knowing I will have to wear something under it so I don't want to knit a sweater other than if I wanted a, a, a rustic -y outdoor sweater, yeah. I would do that. But I don't want to make a sweater knowing that, okay, well, I'll just wear something under it because I find sweaters warm to begin with. Mm -hmm. oh. And so if, if I need to put something on under a sweater, that's different, but I want to have the option of wearing it with those. So that's why I prefer to use softer um, yarns so that against my skin or at least even against your neck sometimes a rougher sweater can still prick yeah not prickly. yeah mm -hmm. and I have, i'm just sensitive to the texture so i started and i'm this far into the let me i'll, I'll hold we'll it do the, this side okay. okay so it's just um there's some slip stitch ribbing in there there's some um, like kind of like a cable slip stitch cabling it's not difficult so far. Yeah. Really easy repeat. Like you, you can just look at the pattern and then do the whole round. And I'm loving it. That's so there so are nice. short rows in the back. And it just has a rolled hem neckline, which Isabel does like often. And I love, yeah. Yeah. So I am loving this. I'm loving knitting it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, really nice. my cardinal <laughs> stitch stoppers. I love cardinals. And I got these um, from Timber Yarns. So she has a lot of stitch stoppers. So that's, they don't match my project, but they were in my, <laughs> in my notions bag. Oh, and, um, Marianne brought with me, I'm just going, well, I'll show it and then I can set it up. Marianne brought a yarn holder or carrier from Pearl and Hank in Winnipeg. So these are all, um, handmade and it's all leather and then the hardware. So there is a strap. You can see her brand, Pearl and Hank. And this is if you just, um, they're for outside pull balls. So I'm going to put, no, I'll put this one on there. Um, you just find the center of your ball or cake and pull it through. So it sits on the little, the pedestal at the bottom, or the platter at the bottom. And then you can click the strap on and you can put it around your wrist or if you're knitting in the car, you can hang it in the car and it turns. So as you pull your yarn, it'll just turn and you won't have any tangles. And these are, these are out and about now. They're becoming more popular and I've seen a lot of people do them in plastic and I was going to buy one mm. in plastic. And then when I saw that Pearl and Hank had this, um, yeah, she does all the leather yeah. work. it's a, it's a, an, a step up in price, but I love that it's natural materials and yeah, handmade and I like supporting her. Um, so the handle actually has a snap so oh. that you can like loop it through something. Yeah. So I just love, like that is so awesome. I'm gonna use that and today. And it's, it's so lightweight and not bulky. Not at compared all. Compared to maybe a plastic one mm -hmm. where it's more formed. You saw some at, at wool, wool stock where they, you said they were wooden? Or no, I didn't see them. You did? No. Yeah. Oh, maybe Lisa did. Someone oh, did. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a sturdy. It's two layers of um, a rigid leather on the bottom, so it is pretty, pretty sturdy. So yeah, yes. Pearl and Hank, Winnipeg maker. She has a yarn shop. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, that's my only that's rant. Mm -hmm. I like that. So that's all we have for knitting to show you, but then we're going to talk about our adventures. So we yes. did go to um, Little Red Mitten. So I picked these guys up from the London airport and we're going to be driving right by, right? So we went to Little Red Mitten that afternoon. <clears throat> did a little looking, a little shopping and a little knitting. So what I picked up there were a few new things that they have in the store. Um, and they got new colors of Marla. So this is Malabrigo. Um, and it's a marled yarn. It is 100% superwash merino. And then they also have solids. Um, they have a, it's not Marla, it's another name, but Lana? No, I can't remember. So this is, this is a new color and you can see it's like dark brown, black, gray. There's a, kind of a minty, a light minty icy blue in there. Um, I got it to, I have some sweater quantities, um, in a natural and a gray and I just want to see what will work. So I didn't buy too many because I don't know what pattern I would make or how much I would need, but I wanted to be able to compare it to the colors. And then I also got two balls of the Lang Mew Calori. It's a sock yarn and it's got Stellina. I don't know if it shows a little bit. Hello. Yeah, it's a color changing sock yarn and it has Stellina. Yeah. And, um, oh, and show the picture or I can. This is how it the transitions. So it's gradient oh. as well. And um, Monica was there. Monica teaches the knitting classes at Little Red Mitten. She's a friend of mine. She taught me how to, did I say knitting or weaving? weaving. I was going to say she doesn't weave. She teaches weaving. weaving. She can't probably teach knitting, but yeah. she teaches the weaving classes. And she taught me. Um, I booked a private lesson with her. So um, I thought these would be beautiful to weave into a scarf. And mm -hmm. she said, absolutely, yes. And she did a little math for me to figure out, you know, what you need. Yeah, would two be enough? So it would be enough. So... I plan to set up my loom soon now that all this fall activity is done <laughs> and yeah, I want to do a little fingering weight scarf with those I think it'll be really fun I think that's kind of all nice. I got I was like scouting some of the new yarns yeah there's so, so much there. mm -hmm. yeah did you get anything there? I didn't get anything okay. at the end no um Shirley did I was really Shirley excited shocked. about going to the Little Red Mitten I watched their podcast and yeah. I follow Leo and Roxy and um, I know that um, I just have, I did buy a little sticker from them with their logo. That's cute. <laughs> did you get the little notions yeah. as well? I did. Flip I did. it around. Yeah. And stitch cute. markers. Stitch markers and needles. Cute. Yeah, darning needles. Yeah. yeah. Thought that you can cool. never have too many darning needles. So, of course, I had to get the, uh, the wallpaper. The wallpaper yarn from there. I was quite excited and this way, saw the wallpaper behind the counter and it is gorgeous and the yarn is beautifully dyed, it matches yeah. really well. So I did that. Yeah, they have that. a big wall of floral wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. And so I have enough of that to make a pair of mittens and, and a hat. Okay. So I'll do those. Because this is their merino worsted. 100% superwash merino. Yeah. I love this color. I don't know if Leo and Roxy sells this on Leo and Roxy website, but the mitten, because it's a special colorway for the mitten, so you can definitely get wallpaper from uh, Little Red Mitten's website. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do, because I knew that when I went there, I was looking for okay. that specifically. And um, Jolyn was there, and she showed me all the different weights and everything, mm. what I could pick from. And um, this is also Leo and Roxy that I got there. And... Um, there was some samples knit up with that, and that is Surrey Silk, I believe. Mm -hmm. This is the Surrey Silk. And it's so soft, and I really wanted to do something with the slub, and they had them together, and yeah. uh, and they were they gave me a pattern that she had made up with uh, for a cowl. Mm -hmm. So I'll do a cowl. They did have this, uh, a few little scarves done up, but I'm going to go with mm -hmm. the cowl instead. They sell kits for these for the tassels in the sky or for whatever pattern you want. Um, their Surrey Silk is put up in a 50 gram ball and it is 400 meters. So you have the same yardage because sometimes you get mohair or Surrey Silk in slightly smaller um, yardages. So they've had it, um, they've ordered it so that such that it comes that way. So it is 65% baby, baby Surrey mm -hmm. alpaca and 35% silk. 
and their slub is merino nylon, a 90-10. This color is wishing for blue skies. I should say that. And this is Leo. <laughs> and that has, I like, it has a little bit of orange, like it's a little rust, like I like the rusty colors mm -hmm. and then I like the, yeah. the, the blue, purple, green. green. Yeah. Really nice. It's okay. like a rainbow of colors, I think. Mm -hmm. And I definitely was going to buy a sweater quantity of yarn from there. Um, I've ordered before, like up in the pod. There isn't a yarn shop anymore, mm -hmm. so I'm ordering online. And because I follow them, I do order from there frequently. And um, so I chose this one, and I'm going to do the Felix yeah. um, pullover. And I chose, like, it's, um, is that, that's Aaron Waite, I believe. Yeah, I think we looked heavier it up. than worsted. The yeah. color is Madeira. It is 60% wool, 30% silk, 10% alpaca. Yeah, so as far as like a chunky wool, sometimes it is a little. Oh, uh, like, but the, uh, oh. oh, the color is not Madeira. I think that's the base. The color is 22. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking, what's the name of the base? Um, but it is a Noro. Yeah, really nice. And it has that twist in there. It almost looks a little. Thick, thin, like a... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's looking warmer on the camera. It's looking... Um, it's just oh, a bit tiny more. bit darker. Yeah. But it's just... Yeah, it does a little, bit, yeah, a little bit warmer. Yeah. But it's a nice, like a cocoa color. So I bought needles for this as well because I wanted some assistance from um, Marianne and Dawn to cast on. But because I'm a slow knitter, I've been working on my other one and I haven't cast this on. And I realized watching you two knit why I'm slower is because I start talking and I stop knitting. <laughs> Whereas you can both talk and knit at the same time. So well, let's you're also doing knitting. when you're knitting something that has cables and stitch markers, that's a little yeah, trickier. And decreasing each round you gotta really yeah. yeah. I mean I kept losing my stitch marker. <laughs> and Marianne pointed out that I guess what I was doing was I'd knit to a point and I'd stop to the niche mark uh, stitch niche marker, stitch marker. And then I'd start talking, and then that's when it would fall off. So Marianne gave me Stop a one before the stitch marker or knit one past the stitch marker. Yes. <laughs> so, good point. Yeah, because I lost it a couple of times. So that's what I bought at... Um, the Mitten? Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. And it was a beautiful store, and I love how it's arranged with the weights in each room. Mm -hmm. Because yes. I knew that I was going for... I was looking for DK as well as DK or worsted. I... Um, despite you giving me some really solid tips when I first started knitting about not going so crazy with the fingering, I didn't listen. And so I do have a lot of fingering at home and I don't know how long it would take me to knit a fingering weight sweater. But anyway, I wasn't longer. looking for that. So yeah. I went with some heavier weights. Yeah. So and that. that was really, it was good to do that at a yarn store because at Woolstock, probably the majority of the booths don't necessarily have sweater quantities of the same color. Right. Some of them do, because some of them are more of a store, like a yarn shop, but it can be hard to find a sweater quantity. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it was actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm but glad it, that know. I bought this there. Yeah, okay. I'm excited to cast that on. And I think the pattern, um, I don't know if you have seen the Felix, but it is kind of a, uh, like what the model is wearing kind of a heavier, sweater and it does look a little nubby so and it has um what's that called when it has different flex in it like heather like naps oh um tweedy tweedy yeah and this isn't tweedy but it does i guess is it tweedy no, it does i it, it kind of has. has it does have some little yeah you're right it does have a tweedy look yeah a tweedy there's, look but i don't there's little think bits of like, fiber that are different colored yeah there's some little, orange some darker black and yeah so I'm excited about that. So that's the, you want to do this one, the Felix Pullover by Amy Christopher's. Yes. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And I love That's how... almost the same color as her sample. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it has the little eyelet leaf pattern down the raglan. Right. And that's what I, th I think I need help with. But I think just watching both of you knit the, leaving that um, to make the eyelet, mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, oh, I think I understand. It's going to be a yarn over. They're it's probably just yarn, yarn over. Overs. Yeah, there's no. You've done this. Yeah, I've done this one in a cardigan. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really simple. Now the good thing is, Shirley, it looks like your ribbing, your neckline is just ribbing, and then you go into those things. So oh, okay. you're probably, you know, okay to to get started. I don't know if it has short rows at the neck or not. Probably might, but that's you just do that at the back and 
keep your stitch markers in there. And that one is size inclusive, like it does have mm -hmm. some, where's the measurements? Um, it, well, it, it goes up to a 57 inch. Yeah. So a lot of them are now going up to 62 or 64. Okay. Um, but 57 inch around the chest at the underarm. Yeah. So, so. Oh, she used oh. Letty Loki on hers. I just see that now. Oh. And Blossom when, oh, I did, um, there's a, a gal in the paw who wasn't going to be knitting anymore. So a friend of hers knew that I knit. So she gave me a call and said, my friend's clearing out all of her yarn. Um, did you want to come and take a look? So she had two totes and she nice. offered the totes just like basically as is for a flat know, rate. Yeah, flat rate. And I'm like, sure. So I got it <laughs> home and uh, there's a lot of ready. Like well, those there. are, it's. And she was, she has like, it's all natural fibers. Stuff yeah. Is in there. It's nice. Good haul. Let Lopi's great to make like a big oversized sweater that you can just throw on when it's cool, but not like a super cold day, right? You just want something. I think it would make a, a really nice swancho. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. and I yeah. saw Marianne has one, and I think that I think that's kind of what I was thinking. Like mm -hmm. I like that heavy weight yarn for that. Mm -hmm. so I'm excited about that. Nice. Yeah, nice. This was a good. I really enjoyed the little red mitten. And then, so that was there. Should I go on with the rest of my... Well, after the mitten, we went oh, to... We did a little road trip, a little visit, field trip, out to Black Ash Acres Alpaca Farm. So I know Elaine, the owner, and I've been out there a few times, and I phoned her up and she was available. So we did a little visit to the alpaca farm. <laughs> <laughs> and bought souvenirs. Oh, so so there are some videos and photos we took, and I'll pop them in. And uh, basically, we had a really good time. The alpacas were, they came up a lot more, more of them came up close than any other visit I've been out there before. We were also giving them little handfuls of feed. So they were, you know, that encouraged them. But um, even Elaine said that um, some of them were coming up. Maybe they're getting used to visitors. And, yeah. yeah. So there was, the boys were in one barn and then the girls were in the other barn and we got to see both of them and <laughs> had a little bit of fun, as you will uh, see in the videos. Here, here okay. Hi, Maggie. This is Molly. <laughs> I think I got a mouthful. Molly. Molly, it's all right. She can come. Molly. <laughs> Just push her out. I might have to take Tasha and... I'm going to hand that to you. I'm going to go oh, and okay. see if I can lock Tasha in the pen. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> For that very reason. <laughs> I got that on tape. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you really? <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> She's true to what I said, isn't she? <laughs> I was really taken back by it. like, or not taken back, just like floored that um, well, definitely the females were more social. Mm -hmm. They were really at us like, and I had two eating out of my hand at one time. Yeah. And I was just like, this is surreal. Yeah. And yeah. The so. one really friendly one, Molly, looks a lot like this. Molly is a white mm -hmm. and um, that's the one that's always been the friendliest. And she, uh, Elaine has fiber and yarn and finished um stuff but she's got like the the names of the alpacas that the blend the fiber came from on her skeins so with the white you'll often see molly and a few others but okay. you picked up this little it's a gift for someone yes my great niece nova her birthday's coming up so, so oh my god and this yeah. is actually alpaca oh and it's yeah. so fiber. soft yes Oh, yeah. goodness. So there's a little farm shop and Elaine has, uh, you took a photo, so I'll get that photo from you. And um, Elaine has like all kinds of things in her little farm shop. So all kinds adorable. of things. <laughs> <laughs> I am really interested in blue clay. Is that proper? Blue clay, blue yeah. Clay. And um, this is kind of a periwinkle and I see a, a pink in there as well and bluish. Mm -hmm. And um, or maybe closer to this. I think I can do it. I was happy to see that that they had because I do have a pair of mittens uh, back home that are knit in the blue clay and they're they were a gray kind of alpaca. Okay. But my thumbs are wearing through. 
Oh, yeah. So I did think of a solution for that is that I'm going to lock them again, wet lock them, and then let them dry so that I can wear them on the opposite hand now. So the thinning won't be at the front anymore. It'll be okay. on the back of the other side because oh, yeah. you can't change like when they're still, when you've been wearing them. You, but if you mm -hmm. lock them out, I think you'd be able to switch. So I'll see if it works. I don't know. You, work. you could probably, are they felted or just knit? Just like, knit. You could, you could cut the top of the thumb unravel it back, oh, put right. the live stitches on needles, weave in that end, and re-knit the thumb. Right. In a, yeah. You could do it in a contrast color and have two different colored thumbs if you want to prolong the life of your right. mitts. Oh, that would work too. Yeah. yeah. That's so this bouquet, it's a three-ply, but it's 158 yards for 130 grams. So this is more like a bulky. Yeah. And uh, because of the, the little loops on the bouquet. And it is 75% alpaca. 25% merino. I don't know if you can purchase from Elaine's website because I've just always gone there or seen her at fiber festivals, but her website is black, dub, 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 blackashacres.on.ca and that'll be in our notes. So she's on Courtright line out in Oil Springs. It's not like just drop in any time. Um, she does have open houses though. So if you go on her website, um, she's not really on social media, but if you go on her website, um, uh, she may list like when they're having, they do open houses for the shearing and she does a, a holiday open house. It comes up in November. So then she has other um, spinners and makers and stuff that will have products there for sale as well. And you can go in and, and see the alpacas. And I did buy another, this one is um, alpaca again, of course, and 15% merino and beautiful purple color. And it matches the sky here. It does. So I was thinking like neck warmer or, or something. And then mittens. And this definitely will be mittens. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 200 yards. So, or for 140 grams. So a little heavier than a, a worsted, but not more than an Aaron. Yeah. So I think really nice. nice. Yeah. Not a bulky for sure. Yeah. Oh, and the, the, so this is dyed, but the animals whose fiber is in this yarn are Ariella and Tremaine. Does oh. that one have names? Yeah. Toby, Brady, and Kirby. <laughs> Sweet. There you go. I wish I would have known which ones I fed. The merino, so she would have blended her fiber um, with merino at the mill. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. That's Sheeps. where the merino comes. She doesn't have sheep. Awesome. Sweet. Um, I got a few things there. I think I have some more of this in my stash. Is this it? That all I got. Yes, it is. Okay, so I got two skeins of this gray um, alpaca merino, um, 200 yards for 90 grams, so probably close to a worsted. And uh, the animals are Adelio and Cheyenne. So I got those, and then I got a natural. And the natural is Hugo, Jasper, and Callie. <laughs> Oh, this one is mer alpaca with uh, merino bamboo blend. These aren't exactly the same weight. Did uh, she not mix a black and white? I think so, or a brown and white. The, yeah, the dark, yeah. dark And that's how it got, it's yeah. this gray color. So I thought, I've got those for something. I don't know what. Something okay. nice and warm and beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And you didn't get anything. I didn't get anything from there this year. I had my hands on some of that really dark, black brown mm -hmm. but there wasn't enough for um quite a, a sweater quantity and that's what i was looking for in, in, in a black brown so yeah. it was like oh shucks but yeah last year i got some um started mitts little mitts with them and yeah so that was my purchase last year mm -hmm. um we also went to knit by the bridge uh we've been on if you follow any of us on instagram there's lots of photos there but i can i can stick a few in at the end um and then Saturday was the big day. We went to Woolstock yes. in the Paris, in the Brandt Paris fi uh, Fairgrounds. It's a great fiber festival <laughs> in uh, southwestern Ontario. <laughs> and uh, anyone in this area is... Uh, no, there's still people who haven't heard of it. Yeah. I've, meet, I've met people like recently that haven't heard of it or haven't gone. But it's a really good fiber festival. I, I think there were well over 70 vendors. And it is a true fiber festival where there is fiber, there is felted wool for um, rug hooking or um, punch needle. So supplies mm -hmm. for almost any fiber craft. I, the only thing I didn't see were um, like a weaving 
supplier mm -hmm. with cones for weaving. True. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff. It's not just um, indie dyer. There are a couple of yarn shops that come and bring a variety of things as well. Um, there are some, there was the, uh, the truck with the Big Blue Mama. Was it actually Big Blue Mama? That was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Revolution Wool Company, which has um, products from her farm, Circle R Farms. So she's doing wool pillows. Um, she's got a lot of blankets and wool from her farm. And then Twin Oaks was actually inside the building. Um, so Laura was there with uh, products from her farm. Lots of beautiful bag makers. So, yeah. They didn't have animals this year. No. I that, think because they couldn't use the one barn. Okay. From what Richard had said. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Something bad this year. Yeah. Something happened. But there usually are some live animals. Um, they usually bring, there's someone that brings the Angora rabbits, which are really nice. Yeah. Hi, Richard. We all saw Richard at the show. <laughs> Richard. Yarns of Richard DeVries. Um, so we, we found some goodies there. So Marianne. Yeah. So I had very specific things that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. You didn't really find what I was looking for, but that was probably my own part, fault, but whatever. So anyways, I went to Unwind, uh, Unwind Yarn House. Mm -hmm. um, Karen owns that in Mar Markham. Somewhere near Toronto. I, yeah, I believe it was Markham. Anyway, so I got this moda. It is from Spain. Uh, Dream Will Dreamers. Will Dreamers, yeah. It's called Moda. This is a Granny Smith apple color. It looks yeah. a tiny bit brighter on the screen, but it's pretty yeah. close. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just going to do a, just a simple sweater. Haven't decided which pattern yet. Um, simple one. Might even do the flax with that one. Oh, yeah. Nice. But yeah, 100% wool. It's uh, very similar to the uh, Ulysses. Okay. Like a feeling wise. Yeah. So it's a little... It feels like 100% wool. Yeah. But she had two samples. She was wearing a striped mm -hmm. sweater and she had another sample. And it actually felt nice. Really nice. Yeah. Um, after it's been knit and washed. Yeah. But, yeah. And soaked. It's going to. Yeah. But yeah, the color kind of caught my eye. And we were laughing because like, you know, you look at all your sweaters like, okay, what color isn't there? Mm -hmm. You know, so this was a color that really wasn't there for the winter. So. Awesome. And that's a great yeah. color. I think that you could probably wear it all year round, yeah. right? Like yeah. it's. Yeah. Right, it's springy in summer, but then it also has a little bit of a dark. Yeah, just to brighten up the winter yeah. time too, right? Yeah. That you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll look good with black, brown, ivory. Nice. Yeah. So that was mm -hmm. actually that was my only purchase there. That was the only thing that. That's the only thing you found. Yeah. There? Yeah. I found. I'll go because Shirley okay. found a lot. <laughs> I found <laughs> a mug. Are you surprised? I got a mug from Here on Shores Pottery. So handcrafted ceramics. I, I picked it up. I have a lot of mugs, but I love the shape. It's taller. It's, it's not super wide like this. I like these pot bellied ones too. So it's a little taller and slimmer. Um, and I love the glaze color mm -hmm. and nice, good handle. So yeah, that's so that was one of my treasures. Um, and I, probably the first booth I really stopped at, <laughs> Yarn Indulgences. Um, she's always got beautiful things and she had Surrey silk and it is a 400 meter 50 gram skein and I got four in winter white so like undyed so that I could hold it with whatever I might hold it with like kind of a variegated or speckled yarn mm -hmm. in this sweater because the Surrey alpaca the Surrey alpaca and silk doesn't prick me like mohair, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. depending on the silk content, I can't always wear that. I just around my neck, it bugs me. Mm -hmm. um, but Surrey silk, I love. So I got those for in this color. And then um, the Surrey silk fluff is her base. And I got this color because, let me turn this around. If I have, I probably will have some leftovers, but if I have leftovers, I thought I could always put it with that and do yeah. something, right? Make some, make a, a little hat or mittens. Um, so I got that color and, um, so I got those. We stopped and saw Pat from Stony Lake Yarns oh, and she had posted Twitter. on, yeah, on her webs or on the Instagram that if you stop by her booth, the first, I think five people who stopped by her booth and told her what they're thankful for and said, hi, who follow her, you could pick a free mini skein. So I, it was a grab bag. So I just reached in and I pulled out the perfect color for me. <laughs> Shirley found a yellow. Oh, nice. A really bright, like, sunshiny yellow. Oh, Hey, ours all kind of go together. Oh, 
Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's a good color for you too. Yeah. Nice. So I was actually yeah. looking for a sweater quantity in, in this, in something. In like something. Yeah. Oh yeah. But again, it just didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So it was nice to see Pat. Hi Pat. Um, she's Hi, really Pat. sweet. <laughs> yeah. And we got a little mini skein from Pat. Uh, oh, not yarn. I did get, this is, I love her booth. I've gone before. Um, Pottery by Monica Schaefer. She, I've bought stitch markers from her last year. She makes buttons. She makes other like pottery vessels, um, little pins, and she makes shawl pins. So that's her card, Pottery by Monica Schaefer. She's uh, monicaschaefer.com. And um, I got this shawl pin. I thought it was really neat. It's It looks very green. It's actually quite dark. It's almost a teal, whatever, teal color, hey, in there. And a copper. With a copper, um, pin a little copper pin, yeah, stick. The, the pin. And then she threw in a little bag of seeds. So these are yellow orange Cosmos seeds, which is really sweet. Just a little thank you that she added in. So I've never grown Cosmos. Oh, so I'll have to plant those. Okay, so that was nice. Yeah. And, um, I'm done. No, no, I'm not. Oh. I went to Coriander Knits because I knew she had some um, yak content yarns. Uh, so this is Merino Yak Nylon for socks. And it's just a like a darker oatmeal color. So this will be beautiful for a textured mm -hmm. pattern. Yes. Yeah. So it's 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon, and this is undyed. So this is just a natural, it's a very taupey oatmeal color. So yeah, I got to grab myself that. So soft. Yeah, I'm in a, well, you know, I want to make lots of um, socks with texture patterns, mm -hmm. so solids. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Nice. And then Shirley had some fun. It was, yes. it was your first fiber festival ever. Right. First and time. your first wool stock. Yes. And actually, I've only been to a, a couple of actual yarn shops. Like I mostly order online. Mm -hmm. So going to the Little Red Mitten, um, we have Wolseley Wool in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. and, and that's like uh, six hours from you. Six, yeah, yeah, six hour car ride. Long time to get there. <laughs> and it never feels that nobody wants, to, like anybody who I go with, like they're not interested in the yarn. So I was, this is awesome to be able to go and yeah. have people to want to look as long as I do. Yeah. yeah. Take mm -hmm. your time and not be rushed and not have someone waiting who's annoyed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for someone who enjoys long walks through the yarn store. That's <laughs> a... <laughs> not the beach. The okay. yarn store. So I was with Dawn from the mm -hmm. first little while. So I too picked up some yarn indulgence and um this one, uh, well, it's just incredibly soft. It's the Surrey and Silk um, fluff, fluff. Yeah. and there's quite a bit in there. Yeah. And it has like teals and gray. There's some bluer places, like yeah. it has a little blue. bit of green. And um, I called Ireland. Oh, yeah. Nice. It has oh, okay. colorway. Ireland. So then. Oh, there you can see some of the different. Yeah. So aptly named for sure. Uh, yeah. And I don't know, um, what I did think was a necklace, and I'm probably one of the only knitters who hasn't made one yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a nice tip to hold it with. The only thing is I don't know what color I yarn, mm -hmm. like a solid yarn I would use. And I don't know if it would be like a gray, mm -hmm. because then it would take the gray. If it was white, then at least like all of the colors would The show. greens would show more. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, people who don't know this, um, okay. when you wind it, Take, take an end and hold it with a natural and get like something, you can use a card, you can use a ruler, whatever you want, and just do some wrapping. Oh, okay. And just wrap them for a while and make a little solid section of the two colors wrapped and then see what that color does. So you don't have to knit, you can knit a swatch, but that's time consuming. So knit a swatch for gauge, but if you're just doing color combinations and then do it with a gray. So I think you'll get, you'll see more of the greens and blues right. with a natural and the gray will mute it more, but you may like that more. But that's what you can do. I had told Adrian that when she was wondering about what color mohair to hold with one of her yarns for a project. And uh, I said, don't, don't knit it. Cause that takes time, but, um, 
hold them together and kind of just wind, wind them or, or wind it over your hand or whatever, but just a little bit so that you can see huh, how's the, how do they look together. Yeah. It'll give you an idea. And her booth, her booth was beautiful and they had uh -huh. some really nice yarns and they did have one that looked, they were calling it like a zebra. Oh. Where it had some uh, black uh, and white stripes in there as well as the color. She calls that her sock marl. Oh, okay. Yeah. Other people call it zebra stripe, but yeah, if you yeah if, if you've seen other dyers with hand dyed and they call it a zebra stripe, I don't know if uh, she does call it zebra, but it's that same base. Yeah. Okay. And there was more mm -hmm. sock yarn. Like there was so many beautiful colors in yeah. it. Mm -hmm. First booth, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> And I'm like, stop. Okay, wait, there's so much more to the sea. Yeah. Yet. So I'm glad I picked this one up. And mm -hmm. yeah. So you yeah. got three of those? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that you could do a that. sweater. These ones are from Lichen and Lays. And it's embroidery floss that they dye. The, oh. There is matching yarns that they do. So I do have a couple more at home. But I want to embroider on a sweater. I did uh, flax and it's just in a plain purple. And the the... Purple doesn't have any depth. It's just a solid purple. So, not my coffee. <laughs> oh, it was empty. <laughs> okay. And so I think I may order um, mm -hmm. some more colors from her that uh, to go with because I want to embroider on this sweater. Yeah. That yeah. I have a plan if you for, can so. see in the in the camera, there's looks like there's a bit of sheen, and that's because they are wool and forty five percent silk. So that's really neat. Oh, so that'll look really nice on the It'll look beautiful. It a, yes. a, 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 kind of a, I want to say drab, like, or matted. It's matted. a solid matted. color. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, there we go. Yeah, and it's solid, like you said. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't This will pop job. with the sheen will this pop. This will it. really do a good job. Really nice. And, I didn't uh, even look at her booth. I just picked some colors that I thought might go with that purple sweater. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, but I didn't buy a yellow, which is kind of what I was, yeah, <laughs> the yellow and the purple. So uh, from uh, I didn't buy any yarn from there, but she did have, like, I have bought yarn from there before, and mm -hmm. I was glad that I picked that up. And uh, so then we're walking around a little bit more, and from that booth, I did see, I was looking for, a, I was looking for a sweater quantity in DK. And like you said, there's so many indie dyers that uh, don't stock a lot of one color. So mm -hmm. I did find one, and um, it was Indigo Dragonfly. Mm -hmm. But I didn't purchase that there. I decided to wait and continue looking. So I don't know if you want to show it now or wait till I. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to. Like they don't know what order you went to the booth. That's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> did right. you get a whole sweater quantity? Yes, I did. Okay. You want to talk about it? Okay. So I did know that I wanted to buy a sweater quantity, and um, but I wanted it to be DK, and so mm -hmm. I was happy to find this one at Indigo. What's it called again? Indigo Dragonfly. Indigo Dragonfly. And she ha she was doing two booths this weekend. She is in Rhinebeck and mm -hmm. as yeah. well as Woolstock. Yeah, so she wasn't uh, actually herself in right. Woolstock. She was down in Rhinebeck and her selling. And was here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that booth, I met a lady from the Paul <laughs> who moved to London uh, a few years ago. And she was looking at the yarn in that booth as well. So, hi, Marilyn. And uh, yeah, it was so nice to see her. Yeah. So kind of a funny how people from the pod just end up in the strangest place and we, <laughs> we connect somehow. So, um, yeah. yeah. And this one, I was thinking about the same with that. Uh, I wanted something with a little bit of tonal and not just a solid. And I was thinking this was just solid when I left, but when I came back, I noticed that it does have a little bit of, like just, it's subtle. Bit. Yeah. it's subtle. Yeah. Not like some. Sure. Yeah. It's this DK matter base. And the color is called sargasm. It looks pinker. Pinkier. It's a plum. It's yeah. a real plum. Yeah, We've got a light pink. right above us for, for lighting, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that I think I was influenced oh, by there, her. Oh, that's better. Like against your by the Because oh, I don't normally pick these it's, colors. I know, sometimes you just have a color in your mind. Same it's like an earworm. Yeah. Isn't it? It's a well, color actually, worm. I get this until color after. Yeah. So I like I that. Know. Color worm. worm. <laughs> okay, we yeah. just made that up. Tell worm. the others. <laughs> Tell yeah. the others. Well, and so all you have to do is just um, oh. heal. You can helical knit if you're concerned about differences. Like sometimes if you open up the skein, you can kind of see. It's pretty close mm -hmm. to a solid but it is a hand dye, so you're, you know, There's it's not a, it's a, yeah, a little bit, like you can see right there. 
Oh yeah, a little dark and light. Yeah. So it's not going to be as flat as that purple sweater that I was talking about. It's going to have a little bit of it's some dark depth. Yeah. But yeah. if you heel look yeah. on it, it, it'll probably be pretty evenly distributed. So it'll look more consistent. Okay. Like you might not get the patchy sections. Right. If you heel look on it. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, so yeah. I'm excited about that. So I can start a new sweater and finish that in four years. <laughs> And then I went to, um, oh, and this purple sweater that you're talking about. Oh, I wanted the embroidery. to do embroidery on it. And so I did find somebody who actually sells patterns. Mm -hmm. And I saw this one first and I loved it. And then I thought, I don't want two patterns on my arm. Like oh. the sample had one on each sleeve. I thought, oh, I don't want to do that. So I kept looking and she said, well, no, you don't have to do it like that. You can cut this pattern mm -hmm. and then have it starting up here and drape a little bit over your shoulder. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm going to do. And I think um, just to make it my, like to do something else, I'll probably put one matching on a one, little flower, one mm -hmm. wrist and, and a few of the leaves. And so she sells, um, you would hear it's a wash off fusible printed pattern. So you stick that on your knitting and stitch on the design. And then when you soak it, it the, the white, fabric so dissolves um but you may find after doing a couple you're like oh i could probably freestyle that right oh, yeah the only thing is it does sort of keep it um but you could cut a plain piece and trace it yeah right because there's some empty spots on this i think if that's a full sheet yeah but yeah you can take it um, out if you want yeah so that uh, people can see yeah she has little packages with little pieces that are cut up as well there and was a solid one piece. amazing embroidery pattern there that had a lot of wildflowers mm -hmm. that she would put like on the back of a denim jacket or something. And I was like, ooh, look at that. I'm like, stop. That's quite, not going to yeah. do it. Well, it's, oh, got, I guess it's, it's got, got the, the transfer or the, the backing. backing yeah. yeah. But there's, yeah. So you can cut these up and put them wherever you want. They're printed. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. And, um, sweet and she offers oh, instructions and tutorials. And I think she has an online class you can take yes she does for her I to do this took the picture of the poster i didn't buy the class there mm -hmm. but i took the picture of it because yeah. if i start to look at it and go oh this isn't happening unless i get some instruction then i i might take that class mm -hmm. and i bought these cute little stork scissors oh those are cute well. and they're pink they're so, pink pale mm -hmm. pink yeah uh -huh. so I thought, oh, okay you need a pair of scissors in every project bag yeah i'm sure <laughs> this is by knitted bliss stitching <laughs> So she has embroidery kits as well as knitting, uh, embroidering your knit, knitwear kits and lots of tutorials and yeah, good stuff. Yeah, All right. Right. that was good. And then uh, we walked around the booth and then we walked around the next area as well again. And that's where we bumped into some friends that um, it's so, uh, it was so exciting for me to meet people mm -hmm. that I see just online and they have podcasts or they're part of our Zoom knitting group. And that's how um, I became friends with Marianne through Dawn and mm -hmm. met, we have that group. And so it was just so nice to bump into everybody that's mm -hmm. part of that group. And we've helped each other through some ups and downs in life and, and also which color looks good or how do I do this <laughs> or what's going on? Yeah, so it's so nice to have that group. Lots of knitting guidance. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's knitting and personal support. <laughs> and then um, introduced to new people that I'm sure will become knitting friends over time too. Yeah. So I'm excited. So then we went to the same, I went to Coriander, Coriander? Coriander. Coriander Knits uh, with Dawn. And then I felt that yolk, the yolk. <laughs> yeah, y yak and silk. <laughs> I felt yak and silk for the first time and was, oh my goodness. So I thought I should go with a safe color. So I kind of picked that brown and I thought, no, no, I am gonna. I found this kind of a rusty red. That's mm -hmm. nice. And thought, okay, maybe, and you could knit a whole beanie with one skein. Okay. There are 50 gram skeins, I believe. Mm -hmm. But um, she, yep. she showed that the, the their test knitter did uh, beanie and then she also made some liners for a pair of mitts okay. oh. and so I thought okay and then I couldn't decide between the red and green combination or the red and brown combination and then I was like you know what I'm going to and I'd like to make a cowl but 
I may make a matching hat and towel now because mm -hmm. I did end up buying three because I couldn't decide on the colors that I wanted. And um, just these couldn't. are um, 50 gram fingering weight. So yeah, so you've got like a skein and a half. So yeah, they're just mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. really soft. nice, and the colors are beautiful. They yeah. have it's amazing. And in that booth, she also had uh, this is a merino sparkle, mm -hmm. and she has she had a sample made up with. As you knit, it's going to be the dark colors at the bottom, and then it transitioned up to the light colors. And she knit in a linen stitch, which I haven't seen in person before. Okay. And so it's a denser, not like this would be like more loosey. And I felt like the linen stitch, because the, you backstitch on one of the stitches, um, they're definitely thicker. Mm -hmm. like it, it has, it looks like a woven, like yeah. linen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, That's um, great. right. Yeah. Merino Sparkle. So this is Lurex, which is a little bit of a heavier sparkle yarn. Like the Stellina almost is little wisps, but the Lurex is like a thread. So it shows a lot more. And that's pretty much true to color there. Yeah. So it's kind of like rainbowy, right? Yes. Yeah. Nice. There was one that started with a purple, like it had a purple oh. at the bottom, and then went up to the to the other colors, like up to the green and then the red. Mm -hmm. But um, those were unfortunately sold out. So oh, okay. I went with this one and yeah, she had one knit up in this as well. And I really like that. And then the other spot, um, when I thought I was, oh, I told Dawn that I wasn't starting a new hobby. So I don't, I didn't want you to, I wanted you to watch me if I decided to get into something else, which I was really <laughs> interested in that rug hooking. What she said was, if I'm looking at the rug hooking supplies, come and slap my hand. <laughs> That's what I said. So I admired the one booth that had supplies and kits. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that there was kits with all the, the fibers that you need and kits with all the tools that you need. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I might stop, walk <laughs> away. But I did come across a booth that sells finished items. And so this is finished. And the one side has the wool, mm -hmm. like the design. And the other is just a plain. And I don't... Um, so I thought you definitely could use it for a hot, like you could put it on the center of the mm -hmm. table and mm -hmm. put your hot dishes like right on there. Or I may turn it into a wall hanging because I really yeah. love the colors. And you could, uh, yeah. It would, so it, it could go. It could oh. be a, like a little, not a table runner, but like a, um, just a, um, like placemat style. But like if you had like a, a narrow table, like an entrance yeah. table or on your coffee table, it's yeah. really colorful. Yeah really nice and I was going to see if it could go either way and it could go either way I could hang it this way or I could hang it up and down oh I thought you meant the back <laughs> oh no well that's fun yeah. yes that's boring orientation wise <laughs> yeah this way or this way yeah, yeah. yeah. wherever you have space landscape so or portrait <laughs> oh there we go thank you Maria. yeah so either way I'm, I'm not sure which way I'll hang it up if it's going to hang up or if I'm going to actually use it so yeah. but it I is, yeah. useful art mm -hmm. her she's she's there every year and she she makes these and sells them for i think much less than what the, her effort mm -hmm. is worth um i don't remember her name but i do know i have it and i know that um the woolstock on social media account i mm -hmm. think they featured like when they were talking about their different artisans so i will find out what it's called and it will be in our notes below i she don't, i don't think she has a website or anything like that but you can i know i've always seen her at woolstock like the last in paris anyway the last three years yeah so she had a lot of beautiful pieces wall hangings rugs placemats decorative items yeah and her supportive husband was there mm -hmm. and he's the one who works selling like the items he was working with me for that but and she's working um, she's sitting and she's explaining how to do it to yeah. other other customers. So mm -hmm. I thought, oh, nice, great teamwork. Mm -hmm. I should show you. I have a, a project from my my classes in progress, so you can oh, kind of see. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It it is it is fun, but you you need a lot of different tools that you won't have to get started, and you need yeah. the wool, and you've got to have a place to get that from. So it's 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 an expense oh. to take up that hobby. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not starting anything new. Okay, I said it here first. Okay, and then I love this little. It's just a little notion pouch, and I love cats. Anybody who knows me knows that. And um, so I found this little <laughs> pouch, and actually, there's a little. I bought a few things in that same design 
There's a little uh, ruler, measuring tape, sorry. And the mouse on the back is so sweet. Yeah, it is cute. And then you pull out the tape <laughs> and you push it in, like you push the, it the sucks whole thing. It sucks it in. It in. Yep. So that was so sweet. And then also there's stitch markers with the same cats. So cats knitting. <laughs> cute. Combining oh, they're hard two to great see, loves. But yeah. Really, um, yeah. Uh, it's over the top That's of that knitting. business. <laughs> um, these are actually, what it, I forget the name of the booth that had them. Um, they had a bunch of different knitting related products. And they're, this the, the maker of this is Emma Ball um, from the UK. So that, I'll put that in our notes below if you were interested. And I'll also put the note, the name of the booth that sells them because then you don't have to order from the UK if you wanted to buy something like this. They did have larger tote bags mm -hmm. and they had uh, smaller bags as well in the mm -hmm. same patterns, but they did, this one was sold out. And they also had little Notion tins. I love oh. those little tins. Oh, yeah. yeah. And those That's really cute. Too. So, um, and I think they were the only booth that I noticed was selling um, fiber wash. Is that? Oh. I don't, I, yeah. I was surprised to see it there. Yeah. I can't, I, I'm flying home. I don't so think I anyone have else had, yeah. Any, but I was like, oh. And then I, Oh, nice from Dragon's Tree. Yeah. That's oh, exciting. there's too many things. And then I thought that... Um, you saw this first. Yes, I saw that pom-pom first. Um, love it. It's uh, Raccoon. Okay. She said. Okay. Um, she also said that uh, how they ended up with the raccoon. And so it's... I. It's not farmed. It's not farmed raccoon. It's like it's just... Reclaim. Yeah. Like reclaim. Use, use all parts of the animal. It was probably right. a... Maybe they were sick or I don't know. Right. Yeah. They're not like and hunted for the, like farmed for the fur. Right. And yeah. Super cute. And then they dye them and they're so sweet and yeah. so soft. This one has the sew on snap closure. Yeah. Very nice. I haven't, mm -hmm. mine have all been, I've always stitched them on or something yeah. like or whatever. This so. is handy because then when you want to wash, you just pop the pom pom off because you uh -huh. don't want to be washing your pom pom. No. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. That's a good idea. And then I picked up, I you also needed, needed to <laughs> buy some yarn to match that. So I picked out this uh, That's a great kind of like a charcoal, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that? Yeah. Um, but funny thing, she had two yarns the exact same. Like, or no, I shouldn't say exact same because they were t different tone. Very but close. They were called the same yarn, I think. It was oh. a pixie wrap and it was... The same colorway? Charcoal, yep. Yeah. And... Uh, Thralls of Vinderland. <laughs> Could have been a different, different batch, different dye lot. Yeah. So Shirley got this DK weight yarn. Oh, it's that's looking lighter than it's more like back here, like darker. Yeah. There. Yeah. To go. Nice. nice. That's dragon strings. I don't know if we said that. The dragon strings wrap. And uh, and I did buy a pin at the <laughs> oh good the so pottery me. pin. Monica Schaefer. Yeah. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love it. I asked Don, should it be a happy cat or a sad cat? Because they're the ones that were sad. They had their little whiskers were going down. Oh. <laughs> and um, she said happy, and I'm right. Yeah, yes. um, I agree. Happy is good. Mm -hmm. Happy is good. And she makes the bag from the magazine page. Oh, I love that. It's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. great. And then same thing. She put her card, and then I also got some flower seeds. Same kind. Uh, what are they? Yep. Cosmos. Yep. Nice. And that's so sweet. That's so nice of her to do that. Mm -hmm. It's the little things, right? Mm -hmm. that, and I think recycling magazine yeah. and she's done quite a few folds to get that to work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really, it, awesome. a lot of the booths, right? Like are all into the detail, like into that fine mm -hmm. detail that you know makes what I, I did once. Personal and special. And, it, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Instead of a uh, manufactured bag. Yeah. Although I keep all my bags as long as they're in reusable right. condition. I keep them all. You never know. But, um. I did a gift for someone. It was actually a knitted gift and it was not very big. And so, you know, the scrapbooking paper. Oh yeah. Okay. So I had picked up um, a couple packages of the scrapbooking, the 12 by 12 sheets of scrapbooking paper that were on clearance. And so I, I had two coordinating pages and I put them together and I keep my old sewing needles that are like kind of getting dull for sewing. And I sewed around the edge, just sewed them together. And then put the stuff inside and oh, then sewed cool. it closed oh. and then you can like hole punch two little holes or you don't have to sew it closed but you can you know tie it with um pieces of yarn or something too yeah yeah so i did that and it was actually really cute and then it's really like cute. it's recyclable yeah right so right 
Yeah, but I like this. Make it. And that's yeah. all I bought. That's it. No more. <laughs> Is this mine or yours? I don't know what. Um, that, oh, yeah, that's mine. That's yours. Um, so the luggage situation flying back to Winnipeg from here is going to be, I still think I'm going to fit everything into my one bag or two bags that I have and I'm getting laughter over here. So, um, I'm going to give it a try to and we'll see, but because Dawn is going to squish up that. Yeah. What we'll vacuum mean? seal it. Okay. Vacuum Which seal will the yarn. still take up space. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But surely also like, you know, we, we did and did some shopping, like some clothes shopping and other things. Yeah. And I have a little bit of room in mine, but Dawn does oh. have an extra suitcase. Yes. I, we have, yeah. so we don't yeah. have to squish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. I just want to quickly mention, Shirley brought us a gift of this yes. little... Now, I don't see a brand. It's a nourishing and healing changing lip oil. Lip oil. So it, it color, it, the color adjusts to pH, your personal pH. So fairly quickly after putting it on... <laughs> We all kind of had slightly different shades, which was really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's It's got a pink tint, but it doesn't go on like looking pink. No, mm -hmm. It's got just a it's little, on. yeah, it looks clear. It's got a little bit of a tint. So we all have. <laughs> Mine looks corally pink. Yours is, yours is really oh, looking pink this like could that. Be our... Yeah, but I have to take a picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe we can get Ryan to take a picture. Um, thank you for mm -hmm. that. You said you bought yeah. it. Someone makes it. Yes. It's, okay. And it shows the lady who, who's making it and she's showing how she, she has a big batch and she's making up yeah, and such a cute so it's little, a little yeah. home company. Okay. Deal. Does she sell it online? Yeah. I bought it online. So now I'm going to have to figure out where You'll have was. to find the, yeah, if you can find the name in the next couple days or whatever, and then, um, we'll put it okay. in the notes below. So if you um, aren't already following Marianne, you are on Instagram. Marianne Penner. And Shirley. Shirley Barbo. Your account is private. Yes. So you would have to request to follow Shirley if, if you want to. You don't post as much crafty stuff, though, on the socials. Do uh, you? Um, well, sadly, I am posting what I finish. So <laughs> sadly? <laughs> <laughs> so that is an indication of how fast I'm posting. <laughs> I do However, post more personal things. I've definitely been on a journey of um, personal growth and just uh, coming back from life's yeah. hiccups. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a lot of personal business going on there. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I do post. I do some really wicked pictures of my supplies. <laughs> that is okay. nice to see. But <laughs> if you need inspiration, yeah. Yeah. material inspiration. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this was really fun. Yes. I'm so sad you guys are leaving tomorrow. Oh, I'm sad too. I can't believe it's been four days. I know. That well, you came sad. our way. We yeah. came your way. Yeah. So, you know, you know. Where you we had live. two travel days yeah. to get to Winnipeg yeah, right. and travel to London. We, we did a lot, but we also didn't go crazy. No. Like we've had it was, slow mornings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Not yeah, like other slow. years where we just get up go, and go, go, go. go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. it's been good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this has been really fun. So um, thanks for visiting with us. And it's great to have you guys here in person to do this, to record. Yes, mm -hmm. it is great to see you in person to mm -hmm. do this. Um, I have We have a little group that follows you. And uh, so I just want to say hi to Janet and Penny. Janet and Penny, hi. Uh, from The Paw. And um, yeah. I've knit with Janet Dawn. and Penny. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> And I met Lisa in person. Yeah. So. Oh, you hadn't met Lisa before. No. No. Yeah. And Heather Heather uh, Crawford. Heather um, mm -hmm. is a Finch's Nest. She mm -hmm. records and uh, lives in Sarnia. She records YouTube and lives in Sarnia. And Heather came with us. Um, we've seen her a few times. And hopefully this afternoon we're going to go get by the bridge. Hopefully Louise and Cheryl. You. Louise that's, and Cheryl, you met. Yep. Candice that's Kitchen. Candace. She's yep. I can still make that. Yeah. Um, Louise and Cheryl are the Fiber Friends podcast. Um, and Adrian. Yes. Yeah. Adrian You've seen me Adrian does. before, but you, yeah, yeah Adrian. And, um, I keep forgetting her name, the, the gal from uh, little red mitten. Jo Jillian. Jillian. Yeah. I was a little bit fangirling on her and I was paying for my things and she's asking me a question. I'm like, uh, I said, I'm sorry, I'm fangirling. <laughs> oh. And she said, I wondered what was going on. <laughs> she said, I thought, or whatever. Yeah. She must've picked up on my, oh my God. Oh. Vibe. But, um, 
Yeah, I really appreciate podcasters. They do so much work to put out content and teach us as well mm -hmm. what is happening. And yeah, so it's, it's kind of a big part of yeah, like what I do and mm -hmm. knit and watch. And yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. We hope you make some time to make something and uh, have fun. That's it. That's it. Happy knitting. <laughs> okay.